everybody, this is Mike from the Used Gamers, and welcome back to the Dead Fire once again. We are going to continue on our journey, so we're pretty much done in the town. I think all we got to do is head out to go uh, finally get our ships. We're going to get to that, but I see at first, looks like Choti has something that she needs to talk to me about, so we'll get started. Team, she's up to. Got a weight in my lantern now. Almost feel like I can hear the soul when I jostle it around. Should you be swearing so much as a priestess? <laughs> Reckon not. She grins wide and confident. But I can't help but be a touch wayward. I don't take it too far. My ma caught me once necking in the Merkberry stalks. And of course I fight. But I've not done much more than that. And I don't use the real ugly words. She waggles her sickle and in a helpless sort of gesture. Around in a helpless sort of gesture. Sometimes the feelings, they just come tumbling right out of me. God's darn it. <laughs> Tell me what's on your mind. Uh, how are you feeling? Have you suffered any recent nightmares? I did, recently with you. You were walking the depths of the ocean, but you didn't drown. And in your hand, you gripped the key to Aeora's end. Her face alights with a fierceness. I've seen stars wreathing a statue's brow, and souls flowing like tears over gleaming Audra. And then my god headed into the heart of the storm. Where he could find the darkness. What are your thoughts on Aethys? We talking during the Saints' War or after he died? What's the difference? Well, before he died, he was still Aethys as the majority of my brethren know him. Aethys embodied a human, and when that human got blown to bits, we all believed Aethys died. And I think a part of him did, the part he'd most closely woven into live in flesh, the part that represented life and rebirth after death. Which means the part of him that could have survived, that stormed across the dead fire seas, was the side more aligned with obsession, rot, and falling away, that which is death. Then you mean gone. Sure, maybe my god still answers to Aethys as well. Why not? But Aethys died, and death requires change. He ain't what he was, not in exactly the same way. That's why I think his other aspect, his darkness in the light, is what's burning brighter in him now. Right, no need to right. fiddle foot around. I'm listening. Well, maybe I'll go ahead and finish that conversation. We I'll talking during the Aethys. Saints' War or after he died? Leading up to Saints War. I really only know what my folks taught me. She scratches the back of her head, hesitant. Aethys embodied Saint Wadwin, but during the war, he got blown to bits. That's the thing about human bodies. Eventually, they all gotta die. As the god of rebirth, of course, Aethys would be coming back. But where I differ from my family's view and my high priestess's view is that I've studied the apotheosis of Gone. And I know all about the backside, the downward swoop, the death part of the cycle of life. Obsession, rot, regrowth. What's gone can never be again. What comes back is changed, always. Even if what comes back is a god. No need to fiddle foot around. I'm li- Yeah, it's best we got him. All right, let's head out of here and go get our ship. Although I might want to, I'm going to double check the journal, make sure I don't have any other quests that I need to turn in here. Um, there was also the guy in the jail that I could possibly recruit. Or no, we did recruit him, right? I'll have to check and make sure. I can't remember if we recruited him or not, because we're probably going to need as many crew as we can, especially since I chucked that one dude overboard. <laughs> All right. Hey. I wanted to ask you something. It's about Shodi. What is this one? Sleight of hand, that's interesting. What did you want to ask? She... she means well. I can see that. And she's spirited, and if I was still young and didn't know the things I know, it'd be different. But anybody got that much faith in any god, let alone Aethys? I don't know how to talk to someone like that. Not these days. I get why she's like that. And I was there once, long time back. 
His eyelids flare with relived embarrassment. But it's because of that I can't see a way to respect it. I'm no good at hiding it from her either. I don't see this getting better. Uh, there's more to her than you give her credit for if she can't deal with the truth. It's her problem. Unless you talk, the better. You're going to have to pretend to respect her. Yep, this sounds like my guy. She can't deal with the truth. That's her problem. All right. I'm not going to hide it. Won't be pretty, though. Okay. Uh, let's see. So. Oh, I'm just going to check. Did we recruit that guy? Does not look like it. No. Okay. So let's head to the jail then. Oh, here. Let me look at the journal. Okay. So, stranded. Turn to the beach. Reach the city. Yeah, we did that. Those are companion quest tasks. Here we go. Yeah. So I still have to free him. Restoring order. Return to Savia. I killed Laria. Oh, yeah. That's right. So I got to go to the jail anyway. Talk to her. She's probably not going to be happy that I killed that guy, which is probably not going to help me out in getting this guy recruited. So I might just have to pay for him. We'll see how much. Um, crew members really aren't all that expensive. Uh, usually for just like a novice kind of person, you can just pay about 100 For anybody who's a little bit more experienced, you might have to pay like 300 or more. Um, but still, not really that bad, so we'll see. Keeping out of trouble? A little jest. What is it? Alari's dead. He won't give you any trouble. Madiko. I hoped Ilari might be of use. The people knew him, respected him. He would have been trouble in the end, but no need to have hurried that along. Well, here you are, for your time. <laughs> if I had ten men like you, the whole of Port Maja would be set right within the week. That's more than enough probably to, to free him, so we'll see. All right. Keeping out of trouble. Uh, a little jest. Okay, so what yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to pay to free him. Either that or I could possibly uh, maybe break him out. We'll see. Any chance you'll lower his fine? Kue, don't tell me Rijere has earned your pity. That won't last. She glances at the occupied cell, her nose wrinkling. I do appreciate what you have done for me. So, if you will vouch for Rijere, I will lower the fine. 300 pieces will cover what he owes at the tavern. Something you wanted? Let me see. So... We'll do. Oh, we already searched that, yeah. So I could technically unlock this without using any lock picks. Mm -hmm. uh, who's my stealthiest guy? I just want to kind of see. It's probably going to be a dare. He's only got one. She's got one. Oh, wait, no, I'm looking at the wrong... No, she doesn't have any. So it's just him with one stealth. I don't know hmm? if he's gonna be able to do this. Let me just see. Keep it down. Do, 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 do. Oh, let me take this off because that's gonna make me go too fast. Yeah, he's not gonna be stealthy enough. Okay, well, we're just gonna pay for it. Three hundred is not really that bad. That's about what you pay for a crew member. So Keeping he might out actually be trouble. decent. We'll see. I was I chest. didn't free him with what my other uh, character. I didn't realize he was recruitable. So. Well, good riddance. Here we go. Karasima, Captain. Oh. See you at your ship. And we leveled up. Sweet. All right, perfect. So we turn in both of those. Now we can head to the boat. On the way, I'll probably do some leveling, but um. I'll wait and see till we get to the city, because I think we'll probably be getting another party member here soon, so I'll have to level them up as well. So I might as well wait and just do them all at once, since I don't think we should be running any combat anytime soon. Let's see here. Is there an exit? There we go. Da -da -da -da. Okay, so we're going to leave on foot. Oh, also, I did want to show you guys. Uh, so I, when I first did the video in the character creation, I showed you how they had the free uh, DLC that was the uh, Critical Role pack. So you got like the ability to make all the Vox Machina uh, party members. Uh, there has also been two other uh, free DLCs that have launched, which, I mean, they're really small, not a whole lot of um, content to them. But still, it's really cool that, uh, you know, just every couple of weeks they're putting out, uh, you know, more DLC and more stuff, and it's free. So uh, the second one they let out was the Rum Runners pack, which included a new sidekick, 
um, which I think I mentioned them earlier, where they're kind of companions, but they just don't have as much backstory or, or a lot of interaction. It's it's, it's really a, kind of a basic character, just to add to, you know, <clears throat> add a little bit extra you can do, so uh, different characters kind of play with it are kind of fun. Uh, on top of that, it added... Uh, a couple of other little tweaks, but it added a new stance for your character, which is the drunken one. So, uh, and there was a bunch of, it was obviously from the name Rum Runners, it was a lot of alcohol related stuff. And then they put out another DLC that was the beard and hair pack, I think, where it added new customization good. and some other you stuff. you are here. Clario has made good on his promise. We are making ready to free your ship. Ikawa gestures toward your vessel, where a motley group of Juana and Valian workers race to and fro. I say still that you are fortunate. The ship was nearly lost, but it will float. For how long, I cannot say. You will wish to find a friendly port with some speed, I think. Do you know where Nekataka is? So you will go to the great Kahanga city as well. You must sail north for some time. And then a little east. Take care, Nekitaka outsider. It will close its jaws around you, and you will never notice. That has got to be the most vaguest directions, <laughs> and yet, you know, we're able to find out exactly where it is. <laughs> Sail north, and just a little east. You know, just a little, not too much. Come. <laughs> we will see your defiant out to sea. Okay. Address the matter of our ship's resources before we get underway. Okay. It saddens me to inform you that we lost several crew and most of our provisions during the storm. However, Port Marge appears to be well supplied, and I expect the recent disaster has left several sailors in want of a ship. I suggest we contract for additional supplies and crew before we return to open water, or our voyage may indeed be a short one. So yeah, so you don't have enough crew members to properly manage the ship, so you have to find some more crew. So let's just take a look at our, our ship menu to see what we even have. So let's see, we have a cook who is injured, so um, whenever you get injured crew members, the only way that they can heal is if they're over here in the resting spot. So I don't really need a cook right now, so I'll go ahead and put her to start healing. Uh, what I'm really going to need to get is a surgeon at some point in time, which will speed up healing. Uh, cooks reduce the amount of food that you use, which is up in here. Uh, and then the navigator, I forget what the navigators do. I don't know, they help you like move faster or something like that. Of course, the uh, helmsman is who just steers the ship and makes you move. Cannoneers, of course, shoot the cannons. Deckhands help out with the maneuverability of your ship and are really important for if you get into a ship battle, if you want to flee. The experience of your deckhands are what really decides how well you're able to flee. So, oh, he's actually a seasoned deckhand. That's pretty nice. For only 300, that's pretty good to get uh, him in that early on. Of course, you can upgrade different things like your hull and your sails, and uh, you can get uh, spyglass and different things which help us out. And of course, you can get new ships. Um, but for right now, since my morale is really low, I want to put in some food that will improve some morale. Uh, let's see, do I have anything that has a plus to it? Okay, there's some fish. So we'll put that there. And ale does nothing. Rum will give me plus three. Oh wait, fresh fruit plus one. Yeah, see I said fruit is a really good one to have, so I'll put that up in there. I will put the ale here. I want a drink that's gonna actually add to it, so yeah, let's put the rum. You never have enough rum. <laughs> okay, so I just need one more crew member really to to function because right now I have four even though one is resting it still counts it so all right so we will go ahead and head over to Port Maje so we can hire and you will see little things like this that you can pick up you can see other ships and if you like uh, put your cursor over them it'll say like who they are uh, so this is just an unaffiliated merchant so um, and a lot of times actually you're 
I want inventory, I want your boat. You can actually change your uh, flag, uh, and what that does is uh, Sometimes if you're like sailing through pirate waters, if you have captured a, a pirate ship at some point in time and gotten their flag, you can put the flag on and then you don't have to worry about getting attacked. So it can be kind of helpful. So let's see. Ah, yeah, so. You're going to have an encounter with a ship. So as the Defiant leaves Port Maje behind, you casually observe dozens of other ships coming and going, mostly fishing and trade vessels. One craft stands out, an imposing doe, dow, I guess it's a dow, replete with cannons, crests into view across the Defiant's starboard bow. The flag raised high atop its sail signifies a wish to parley. However, the dow approaches at an aggressive speed, suggesting that it may not be easily turned away. Uh, I'm going to face the pursuer head on. You spin the ship's wheel counterclockwise. The ship swings around quickly, dis disturbing a gull resting on the foremast. The bird voids a white splotch on the deck as a sign of its disapproval. Really? <laughs> I guess the story insisted on telling about a bird pooping on the ship. Okay. You even out the wheel and bear straight towards the dow. The distance closes quickly, and soon the massive dow's hull rolls on the waves beside your ship. Boarding planks emerge and are quickly cast onto your ship, along with shouts from its crew notifying you that their captain will be boarding. Several well-armed men cross the planks, their eyes watching every inch of your ship. The crowd parts open to make way for their captain, a tall, well-dressed man. He peers at you with one impeccably groomed eyebrow raised. Following behind the captain, in stark contrast, strides an unkempt orlan. A pair of pistol grips protrude from his belt, and he casually twirls a stocky firearm from his index finger. His shaggy face framed by long cobalt blue hair and a wildly braided cerulean beard makes the crooked smirk he directs at you seem almost sinister. Okay, so this is going to be another one of the factions from the Deadfire, which is the, the Principe. Uh, so they're basically the pirates. The best way to describe them is if you ever saw the Stars original show called Black Sails, which if you haven't, I'd highly suggest it. It's like Game of Thrones, but with pirates. Pretty awesome. But they're all about uh, basically just liberating the dead fire from all of these factions that are you know, fighting over it and kind of going more for just the freedom, uh, which was very similar to kind of what uh, Captain Flint was trying to do in the show Black Sails in the Caribbean. On behalf of the Principe and Patrina, I must request we meet in parley. The broad-shouldered captain uptilts his chin in greeting. When he smiles, he, his left cheek devouts a shallow dimple. Uh, you couldn't have asked before you boarded my ship uninvited. Request denied. Now get off my ship. Wait, Amico. Hear me out, but for a moment. And I will make it worth your while. With careful, slow movement, he eases a sack of coin from beneath his jacket, just above the blunderbuss strapped to his chest. Then he tosses the pouch to your feet. Oh, see? Being a jerk got me 150 copper. I have heard some marvelous tales regarding your ventures in the Deerwood. In fact, you are the first dragon slayer I have ever met, outside of a grave. Some fools would seek to make a fortune by pilfering from one such as you. I just like the way my guy is just standing there, like, mm. arms crossed, like, whatever. He's done his research. Might as well hear him out. And just, I mean, the character models, the look, I mean, in the first game, the, the look of the people running around, it, was, it wasn't really that great. But then again, it was made a little while ago. But this one, they've just been huge improvements. I'm really interested to see what they, if they continue with this series, which hopefully they do, what, how it, it continues to advance. Under the captain's words, you hear a faint but insistent buzzing. It blooms, overwhelming Ferrante's voice, drowning out all else around you. No one else seems to notice. A vision. Thunder cracks between your ears and you glimpse a different sunshod sea behind your eyes. What is this? Resolve. Fight against it. I don't like people messing with my head, so... You close your mind against the spiritual invasion. But the visions slide around and through your defenses, washing over you as implacably as the sea. The visions streak across your mind's eye, fleeting and incoherent. An elf, dark-haired and battle-scarred, stepping across the gulf between vessels. She shakes Ferrante's hand, and warmth spills through you. Excitement, pride, respect. The imagery melts like candle wax into a lamp-lit galley swamped with the scent of unwatered rum and sweet fruit. 
with sailors and their songs and sweat. The scene billows away, ice cold and clawing, replaced with a crew on deck, solemn and staring as Ferrante grasps one of their own by the throat. No, not one of their own, no more. You don't steal from family and stay family. Tears and mucus mar the man's features as Ferrante reads the man his last rites. Thief or no, they'll consign him to Andra as a tradition dictates. The vision passes, leaving you blinking on the deck of the Defiant. Looking into Ferrante's face, he raises an eyebrow. I believe you have met such a fool. Captain Benweth of the Drake. Despite the gravity of his words, he smiles grandly, and the dimple cuts deeper into his left cheek. So yeah, the Captain Benweth is the guy who left us stranded. You saw the Captain Benweth is the one who attacked me. Wait, who are the Prince P? Uh, I know a cipher's handiwork when I feel it. Tell yours to stay out of my head. The Blue Orland's mouth falls open. Voxen of Ubildet Merla. Careful, ship hunter. Mind that you do not confuse a useful skill set for a non-expendable one. Ferrante glares at Seraphin. The Orlin steps back, blinking away the rebuke, and peers at you, probing. His yellow-green eyes narrow, unfocused, as if trying to remember something. Then the captain turns a warm smile back to you. My apologies. Rest assured, it will not happen again. So it sounded like he didn't realize that he was doing that. Apologies, Captain. Didn't mean it, really. We're up all night, you know, searching out our friend here. You've been at sea a while. Your mind starts playing tricks on you, eh? Well, mine plays tricks on others, too. Usually don't mean much. Maybe see a bit of shadow, hear a bit of tune. Not less a person sensitive. Like, say, a watcher. You say this Captain Benwith is the one who attacked me. <laughs> The short-sighted scoundrel has been wreaking havoc in the area for months. He is no son of Velia. I do not fault his ancestry, but he disregards too much the grand heritage we principally represent. Benwet is the second most selfish captain within the Principi's newest generation. He risks all that we value. And the Principi's are going to cause problems. Benwet is the second most selfish captain. Who's the first? I don't really care. The Principi's heritage is old Velian. Wait, who are the Principi? Let's start with that. If this is the first you are hearing of us, truly? His brow raises in a show of surprise, but then he smiled, his smile turns sly, and he cants his head as if to include you in a secret. We are a magnificent but largely landless people, so we have come to own the sea. To survive, we must seize prosperity where we can. Hence, we are oft labeled as pirates, smugglers, merchants of illicit trade, or mercenaries. It will not always be so, but it is for now. So yeah, responding to the collapse of the Grand Valia, noble families packed up their households and sailed abroad, seeking opportunities away from the shadow of their homeland. Over time, their old world traditions evolved into a new identity as the Principi Sin Patrina, the princes without a homeland, a loosely connected and regulated organization of pirates. If Benwith is one of your own, shouldn't you take responsibility for his actions? Benwith is no captain of mine, Aimiko. It is not beneath my flag his drake sail. Yet I do seek to temper his actions when they would endanger the Principi altogether. Where might I find Captain Benwith? Say I wanted to teach him a lesson. Benwith's drake took damage during the storm. Eventually he will need to dock for repairs, and when he does, Serefin can find him for you. Ferrante flourishes a hand toward the Orlin at his side. He is rather an unrefined creature, but he is a most skilled ship hunter, I assure you. Unrefined? Begging your pardon, Captain, but I'll be the eye fucking model of the gentleman of fortune. <laughs> the Orlin scoffs. As for Benwith, that sucker of squid tits be as predictable as the tide. I'd wager all my furriest bits that he'd set sail for deadline. That would be felicitous indeed, as I believe the traitor Remaro hides there as well. I quite enjoy killing two men with a single bullet. Wouldn't have even thought of it if you hadn't brought it up, sir. Yet you feel a surge of anger that's not your own. Seraphin spins towards you and bows again. Now I ain't hardly in any hurry to leave to find company of the gentlemen of leisure, but the captain be right about me finding your mark. Adding to that, you sail into Fort Deadlight not knowing your innies from your outies. You might very well find the locals cannon fucking your boat to sudden splinters. He grins broadly. Uh, why loan me your 
your best ship hunter, and I don't need your help. Let's just go ahead and move on. Welcome aboard. Oh, you won't be regretting this, Watcher. At least so long as you keep us heavy in grog and light on the onions. Ugh, them dirty shit apples ain't never agreed with me, and I'll be suspecting they never will. He pats his belly as he strides to your side. It's pretty obvious from what I'm getting from him is he's not a big fan of, of working for this, at least this guy, if not the Prince P in general. So, uh, you know, it would be interesting to have him as a member and, and really get to, to see what he says. I have to say, I didn't really use him much, and I don't really know if I'm going to use him now, and I'll show you why, because it has to do with with uh, the like subclass that he is, which is a unique one. He's not sleeping near my berth, I promise you that much. I sail now for Dunwich, my own safe port. I will await you there, should you be successful in schooling our wayward captain. So yeah, so you, uh, this is Seraphin, so you can either be a cypher, a barbarian, or a witch, which is the mixture. Uh, I'm not, obviously not going to do him as, as either of those two, since I already have a barbarian in my party. No point in having two. So I'm going to do cypher. The only thing is I'll show you kind of when he gets in here. If it's going to let yeah, it's probably going to load. Okay, we'll look at him once the load screen finishes. But basically, he is a... Oh, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, his is kind of like an unstable ability because he kind of basically taught himself how to use his cypher powers. So uh, they kind of react in weird ways that can sometimes be hugely beneficial or hugely not. Uh, so he has like a chance here. Let's see if we can get it up. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. He is a wild mind, that's what it is. Uh, so cypher spells have a chance to trigger an unexpected effect. This can manifest in spectacular ways, often, but not always, aiding the party. That's the big part, is but not always. Um, so without formal training, never learning to properly focus their energy, the wild mind is capable of violent surges of fantastic powers that manifest in unpredictable ways. So basically, um, when he uses his abilities, he can either do really crazy stuff like it'll double cast or, or do massive amounts of damage or whatever, or it actually could like cause harm to your own party. So it's it's really kind of a, a risk involved in using him. So I don't know that I'm really going to get that much into him. However, you know he's a fifth party member for right now, so he's going to stick around. And cipher ciphers are helpful to have a, uh, have around, but I've, I've never gotten really quite the hang of them. So I don't know. We'll use him for right now. Um, and then let's see what he's using. Okay, he does have a battle axe, and oh yeah, he starts out with a blunderbuss. I'm gonna use, switch him to pistols because he's. I'm gonna keep him at range. I guess you would shoot with the blunderbuss, then hack with an axe, then shoot with the blunderbuss as you're reloading. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of the weird thing is is in this one they made it to where some of the firearms are one-handed, so you can actually equip a melee weapon in the other hand. All right, so. Let's continue on our way up to Port Maje to get our last crew member. We might even grab a couple. Just looking at what we have. Okay, so here's something. So you can see as you go along, I'm losing medicine as I'm healing. I'm losing uh, drink and uh, food as I'm staying along. And of course I lose wages. And depending on the food and other things that happen, uh, you can gain morale. So right now they have bonus 10 percent experience because of how high their morale is. Um, the higher it gets, the better it is. Um, you want it to be pretty high, but there's no need to keep it right at 100 because you're going to find things that will regularly give you boosts. So uh, as I'm starting out right now, I'm going to boost it up a lot because we're kind of a little low in morale since we crashed, but um, that should be changing just as we um, do more stuff and gain more experience with the crew. Okay, so let's see here. So what you can do is uh, you can just pull into the port, hit supply. Now this is a new thing they added in the most recent patch, which also came out with the beard and hair uh, um, DLC. Uh, so you can just go straight to this and I know refill whatever kind of stuff you have, uh, and you can literally just pick to fill it up or whatever. Uh, we don't really need any of that stuff right now. We're doing. Oh, actually, never mind. We do. We need a lot of medical supplies and a lot of ammunition. Okay, so that would cost me 1,800. I don't think I need quite that much. I don't need to fill it up. I just need enough to get through a little bit. Because you'll pick up a lot of the stuff as you go. So there's not necessarily a reason to just totally deck out. <clears throat> Alright, let's see what we have here. Fine dagger, saber. Oh yeah, I was going to have him dual wield those. Okay. Let's see if my party stash has anything to sell. I can get rid of all this stuff. I will 
keep one torch. Just because it's nice when you're searching around through dark dungeons to have a torch. Get rid of that. Okay, so that made it a little bit cheaper. What we can also do is hire some crew. So this is the first port, so most of the crew is actually free, um, which is nice. Uh, so let's see, we needed another, we need the surgeon. So I definitely want to hire her. Yes. Okay, <clears throat> we do need another cannoneer. Um, oh, this guy actually costs cheaper, that's why. It is nice when you can have them or you can switch them around, but I know I'm going to pick up other helmsmen on the way. Uh, so I think I would prefer... I do need a navigator, um, but I know of a free one that I'll be picking up in not too long, so I'm going to go with the cannoneer. And that should be good for right now. Uh, let's see, I retreated those supplies, right? No, I didn't. Oh, did it reset it? That's annoying. Cart. I gotta do all wait. No. Why did it that's weird. It's like it Oh, yeah, I just put it all in my hate when it does this. Okay. Purchase supplies for your ship. All right, so let's see where we're at, journal. Okay, da, 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 da. so I can either go to Deadlight or Nekataka. So over here, you can look at known locations. So this is a way for you to allow you to kind of fast travel. So Deadlight is where what's his name is. Right now, that's a little bit high level for me. So I don't know that I want to go there. Plus, there's a ton of stuff to get at Nekataka. So I'm going to head that way. Um, and, you know, I might hit some islands to explore on the way. Let's click there, that will take you to your ship. So over here I see some land, so it's a good idea sometimes to investigate there, because you'll find a landing spot where you can go and get some supplies and different things. Oh, you know what I need to do though? Uh, let's make sure everybody is where they're supposed to be. No, you I want here, so I can hurry up and get her healed up. Uh, can any one of these guys be a deckhand? No. He, no, he can be a surgeon. I don't think I'm going to need the cannons anytime soon, so I'm going to put them like that. Because the deckhands, you know, I think they help with your movement and stuff, help you be able to operate the ship. So right now, that's what I need more than, uh, what should call it? The cannons. <clears throat> Let's see, uh, back to water again. So food skin plus one, so we'll just counter each other. I guess that's fine for right now. I'll just have to deal with it. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have this um, cannon that I picked up. Put it in my one cannon here. Eventually, we'll buy another cannon, uh, one that has better range and stuff than the ones we're starting out with. We'll get to that. Fruit, always good. Some water. So sometimes you'll find islands like this that really don't have that much to them, but uh, stuff like fruit is actually really helpful, so it's nice to have. Let's see, what is this? Okay, Valian Training Company, don't have to worry about them. Looks like there's an island over that way, but I'm gonna check to see what this is over here. Nothing. Oh, there's some supplies. Reagent. So that's crafting materials. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Uh, so I wanted to show you some of the other stuff that came with the the DLC. So another thing is is uh, you can actually now edit your entire appearance uh, anytime in the game. So if you don't like the way your character looks, you can literally change them whenever, which is kind of cool. They added some new beard and hairstyles. I don't remember which ones are new. I think this is one of the new ones. Um, some new beard stuff. Um, I don't think there's any that would really look like my character any better. That one's kind of cool. It looks a little bit more Viking-ish. Might go with that. Um, you can change your colors, you know, your stance, all that kind of stuff, um, which is just kind of nice. Uh, they, they did add in another new... So this was the drunken one that was added in for the um, 
Rum Runner DLC, <laughs> which is just kind of fun. So it's just interesting, like, during conversations, your guy will be standing there just looking like an idiot. Uh, then there's Energetic, which I believe that looks like he starts, like, getting all, like, ready to fight. Or just puts his hands on his hips. Yeah. See, he's like, I'm ready to go. So, but we're gonna stick with Stoic. So yeah, just it's just nice that they're putting out stuff like this. You know, they, they really don't. It's it's free. They really don't have to, but it's just kind of cool that they're doing that. Oh look, here's a little interactable thing. Let's see what this is. Okay, you're sailing past a reef when Rumdum Rijere. Isn't that how they pronounce it? I don't know, whatever his name is, shouts out, pointing to port. There lists a ship, stranded in the middle, perched on a narrow shoal. It tips and rolls with the passing waves. Hanging from its mast is a blue flag showing an image of crescent moon sinking beneath the waves. Yaku gathers round, murmuring in low, excited voices. Shield sister Dahlia rushes to the railing. Captain, that's a gift-bearer ship. No telling what sort of treasures it's got. Beodol snorts. Gift bearers carry sentimental junk, worthless stuff. No, it's a smuggler ship. It's a classic disguise. The Nizzy spits into the water. Then it's a... It's a fucking stupid one. Gift bearers only visit landlocked settlements. That's a trap. Bad, bad language. <laughs> uh, let's see. We can either prepare a skiff. Uh, a skiff. Not a skiff. A skiff. Uh, to roll out and climb the hull. What was that about gift bearers? Thoughts, ready the guns, the cannoneers need to practice. See, this is uh, something that you find in Nekataka is a, uh, a spyglass, which you should buy early on, because you're in a lot of stuff where it's actually very helpful. Uh, let's ask again about the gift bearers. Beodol fixes a pensive frown on the wreck. No offense, Captain, but the servants of Andra collect things people want to forget and consign them to the sea. Anything gift bearers might be carrying would be stuff nobody wants. Hmm. <laughs> Thoughts. He's savvy to this kind of stuff. Ain't a trap, Captain. Ship be too smashed for that. Might be too smashed for salvage, too. Seraphin scratches the back of his head as he peers at the vessel. So, he's basically saying that it's worthless. Uh, let's continue on our course. The crew begins to disperse, mumbling. Shield sister Dahlia scuffs a boot against the deck and scowls at Beodol's and Venezi's retreating backs. There might have been something good. It never hurts to look. Shield sister Dahlia shrugs. So I lost five morale for that, because I guess, it, you know, just a little unhappy that we didn't possibly find something. Just then, a large wave crashes against the ship, knocking it violently against the reef. The hull splinters with a loud crack. Shield sister Dahlia gasps. Venezi half turns. That's why Atticus is the captain. Shield Sister Dahlia's face darkens. So obviously, if we would have gone there, it could have meant very bad things. So I actually gained 10 morale, so 5 gain overall. And I got 99 experience for my crew, which is nice. So yeah, there's cool little things like that that you can run into even while you're out here on your ship. There was an island over here that I wanted to check out. Abandoned village. Mind if I do. So let's search it. And this is the thing is while you're on land, uh, it you don't end up using any of your food or resources, but you do still pay wages. So that's something to think about. Uh, let's see, I got rice. Uh, an agate. Three of them. Uh, food item. Keep searching. Keep searching. More rice. Ring of Minor Protection. Nice. Alright. Well, we'll put that on somebody. Let's see here. Um, I think he already got one, right? Yeah, Ring of Minor Protection. Alright. Well, we'll put it... Uh, where did it go? Didn't say I got a Ring of Minor Protection. Did it go into somebody's inventory? Oh, it's because I got a filter on. That's why. Duh. I just gotta watch out for that. Okay. Um, so we'll head back to the ship. There's some salvage out there. We'll go ahead for that. And you can run into storms while you're out at sea. Lots of old or old, bad stuff, so you always want to be careful. Oh, this looks like... Okay, we're gonna search some more. 
Onyx. Battle Axe. I already got two of those, so I'm good. Let's see, this is some kind of interactable area. Okay, as you travel northwest, you discover a broad channel separating you from the flat expanse of a sandy inlet. Uh, a wooden bridge spans the waterway, easily wide enough to accommodate the cart and horse. A crowd throngs the bridge, an eclectic menagerie of clean-coated valians and a mawa in bright and colorful robes, and even the odd orlin. Down the hill, by the water's edge, a small cluster of a mawa have gathered. Approach the mawa near the water. Uh, let's walk onto the bridge. The bridge seems relatively new, little worn for something on the coast. The flat slats are utterly without uh, ostentation, the structure crafted solely for functionality. A quiet murmur of conversation rises as you approach, entirely overwhelming the susurrus of the sea. An orlin, his deep brown fur, a close match to the broad broads beneath your feet, approaches you and doffs a wide-brimmed hat as he bows. Greetings, stranger. Come to eye the race. These people came out here to watch a race? The Orlin grins. Ain't from around here, are you? His raid Saren accent suggests that he isn't either. It's a local tradition, a swim race up the Osa Channel after a big storm when the current's at its strongest. Winner gets a... He scratches the back of his head. Some kind of Guga or some such. Bragging rights, too. He smiles, rubbing his fingers together as if to indicate coin, but for us foreign, non-swimming types, there's a bit of action in the betting. Can I participate in the race? He scratches the top of his head. Not really sure. Can't say it's up to me either. You'd want to talk to them down on the riverside. Let's head to the approach the Amawa near the water. From the shore, you see the channel's current seems significantly stronger than it had from afar, perhaps fed by the recent storms. The Juana gathered here, garbed in thin rows and little else, watch as you approach. One steps forward, her gown, her own gown, in far brighter colors than those around her. She cants her head to the side. You look bedraggled, Saint, uh, stranger, as if the sea spat you upon our shore. What for you came here? To watch? Examine the competitors. What is this? Perception and insight. Uh, let's see. That looks like... Oh, he's got two insight. So yeah, I'm going to go with him because he's only got one less perception. Success! Seraphin looks over the Amawa, eyes lingering on a heavily muscled, bald woman, a lean blonde man, and a gangly youth man in his late teens. I reckon the blonde has an advantage being both strong and compact. So you can either bet on the race, or you can compete in it. If you compete in it, I'm guessing you could probably get some type of loot, so I'm not really desperate for gold right now, so I think I'd like to join. Several of the gathered Huana chuckle. The woman merely smiles, bowing her head slightly. Challenging Osa, it is always done by Omawa to prove strength and stamina in the water. I, I stay afraid it may be... I stay afraid it may be too much for another kith. I thought the Huana would traditionally welcome me, people, so you're afraid of losing to another kith? Is that bluff? You have a point. The Deadfire's already tried to drown me once. He's gonna taunt him. I thought the Juana were traditionally a welcoming people. She bows her head. Then what welcome would have provide what welcome would we provide if we fed our guests unknowing to Nagati? When her gaze returns to yours, she bears a small smile. But you are not unknowing, I say. She nods and motions you towards the channel. Then go join the others at the water's edge. Leave your clothes upon the rocks and they will warm you after. So the water's down. I have to get naked for this. I think I'll keep my clothes on for speed. I don't know if you maybe you had some type of item that might help you as to why you'd want to do that. I, I have my items are so I'm going to just go ahead and go to the water's strip down. You shrug off your brine crusted clothes and lay your belongings on the rocks. My washer, you sure are. I mean, what I. Well, that's, a uh, good luck. Red-faced Choti clears her throat behind her fist, but she doesn't break her stare. Mm-hmm, you like what you see. <laughs> you spring off the stone and crash into the cool, crisp salt water with the other swimmers. Success! You kick against the powerful current, expertly reaching one hand after the other to pull yourself through the water, parting it like a knife. The others fall behind. Nice! One of the Juana, you notice, struggles to remain in the pack. No, he's struggling just to stay above water. His desperate gasps carry down the channel. I don't want to be cruel, but also it's like, hey, if he can't really keep up, that's kind of his problem, right? I'll be cruel this one time. 
keeps them in for the goal. You swim on, noting the muscular, bald woman break away to head back for the struggling swimmer. The goal looms closer. Oh, okay, good. So he's not going to die. With a final burst of muscle-straining speed, you push well ahead, crossing the goal several strokes ahead of the closest competitor. Panting and aching, you pull yourself onto the shore and walk back towards the bridge to collect your belongings. The people on the bridge above cheer and applaud. The master of ceremonies smiles warmly at you. Nagati favors you. She will expect much in return. She presses a small object into your hands, then, f then for you, in honor of your victory. Ring of Unshackling. Grant Suppress Affliction. Nice. Item was put into your stash. Not bad. Crowd on, your, on the bridge thins, and the commotion dies down. Your journey continues. It's not the greatest piece of loot, but it certainly doesn't hurt. Okay, this is a place where you can buy stuff. Let's see, they have hagfish, silverfin, water. None of which is really that interesting. Always look around on these islands, because sometimes these places that don't seem passable are, and a lot of times you can find stuff. It doesn't look like there's anything here, though, so I'll go ahead and head back. So it's just kind of fun. Like, a lot of these islands have things that are just small like this, nothing really big, but it's just cool little distractions you can run into. All right, so let's see. Um, let's see. The Defiant, we're here. This is Dunnage. Wow, we got a ways to go. Okay. Well, let's get going. Uh oh. The ring of a bell comes to you on a cold wind. Oh, great. The gods have something to say. The ring comes again and again until soon the air is full with the sound of a thousand, thousand bells ringing all at once. You feel a resonance in your core, a bell ringing in tune with all the others. Something in you bends, then breaks, and you are borne away on the ringing tide, just another peal among the many. The tide of bells recedes. You lever yourself up onto your knees and realize you have been here before. You stand in Bareth's realm. You are alone and then you are not now you get a couple of scenes like this and they're actually really cool where you're basically present for like a council of the gods so it's just really interesting to interact with these characters they have a, a much much bigger part than the first game which i think is really cool i'm always really big into mythology especially any kind of like polytheistic uh kind of like pantheon of gods so it's it, this this part really uh really uh entices me for the game an indistinct figure stands before you, flickering between forms like a fire-cast shadow. A fixed, taunting grin. Bottomless black eyes. A yawning chasm in the earth. The aspects of Bareth, the Usher, and the Pallid Knight shift in and out of focus. And at their back, four indistinct shades hover. You feel an eternity stretch out behind each of them. Reaching back to places so distant and yet so near, you cannot comprehend their size. The shifting image of Bareth settles on the aspect of the Pallid Knight. Watcher. Her voice is the discordant clangor of gongs struck out of time. I tasked you to discover Aethys's intentions. Tell me what you have learned. I can't follow Aethys around if you're going to keep dragging my soul into beyond whenever the whim takes you. Except my guy is not really big on the gods, so he's always going to give him crap. I will send your soul back to the wheel should the whim take me. Oh, somebody's feeling feisty. Her wan face contorts into what on mortal kith might be called a smile. On her, the effect is more akin to a rotting pumpkin caving in upon itself. <laughs> it's lovely imagery. Do not give me cause to doubt your commitment, Watcher. He's draining souls from veins of Luminous Audra. The pallid knight knits her brows. He does not seek to return to the beyond? Intriguing. Her sickly pale skin pulls tight across the bones of her face, as if the shell of this aspect does not quite fit the impossible creature it contains. The figure nearest Beareth 
dissolves and reforms in the image of a thin-lipped ancient crone whose face has felt the melting kiss of fire. The goddess Wodica strides forward. So Wodica was a really big presence in the first game. That was the the villain of the game was kind of serving her, and, and there was a lot of stuff revolving around her. So she's the goddess of justice, law, oaths, promises, rulership, vengeance, memory, and hierarchies. These guys always have really interesting things that they're, they're over all these random groups. Uh, depicted as an old noblewoman bearing a broken crown upon her head, said to have been once ruled over the other gods, but has since been overthrown. So a lot of the first game was her basically trying to get back her her spot at the top. Does Aethus frighten you, Barath? He should. Magran subdued Aethus's influence once before, and yet he returned. From out of Wodica's shadow shuffles a hunched, bald man you recognize as the God Scan. His skin is mapped with swollen lash scars, and breath whistles through the ragged hole in his face where his nose once was. And you'll find that a lot of the gods kind of are together in like a group or whatever, like some are subservient to other ones, so he's always, uh, Skane is always kind of seen with Wodica. Uh, God of defiance, violent rebellion, secret hatred, covert plots, resentment, and envy. Frequently pictured as a disfigured and scarred slave, and worshipped most often by the subjugated and destitute. He does not speak, but stares up at Wodica, with naked loathing plain on his face. Oh wait, no, that's face. right. He's not with... Oh, crap. What group does he belong to? He's, in, he's against Wodica. I can't... I can, In the first game, there was like, they put them all together in kind of little groups. I don't remember exactly. It's been a little while, but yeah. I was just reading over what he's kind of god of, and yeah, he would not get along with her very well. Wodica steeples her long, knob-jointed fingers. We must annihilate Aethus now, before he makes a rash decision we cannot easily annul. Okay, I guess she's not going to read that. She casts a sly look at the pallid knight from the corner of her eyes. A moon would do the job nicely. Uh... You would destroy Aora for what? Spite? Wodica stares at you down her long nose. I would destroy it all in the blink of your wide eye if I believed it would benefit me. Empires can be rebuilt. Souls can be reforged. Do not forget it. The figure beside the aspect of Barith flows forward in a swirling cloud of ash. The ash falls to the tiles and reveals a molten-skinned woman leaning on a monstrous, wicked-edged broadsword. Magrin's glowing lips curl in disdain. We must find a solution to the problem of Aethys that is neither do nothing nor destroy the world. I acted in haste during the Saints' War. You will not goad me into doing the same now. To move against him while his plans are unknown would be the height of foolishness. We must find wisdom in precaution. I don't care what you do, just put me back in my body so I can get this charade over with. See, this is like, clever. I feel like this would be more of like, maybe passionate or aggressive or something. I, I just... I never really thought of my character as clever, but these seem to be fitting more with him. If anything, just because it's giving the gods crap, so that's always kind of what he likes to do. I could do... He is usually pretty stoic, so I could just say nothing and just let these idiots fight amongst themselves. Maybe we'll stick with that. Another of the silent figures steps forward, and the warm, golden light of a summer's afternoon spills across your face. Let's all take a deep, calming breath. Perhaps cooler heads will prevail. Behind Helia's words, you hear the soft coo of doves. So, Helia is goddess of the sky, maternity, creativity, birds, song, invention, language, and the arts. Not known to take a particular physical form, but thought to be present in birds of all kinds. It should be interesting to see uh, how this goes with her, because in the first game I pledged my loyalty to her, uh, but then I did not do what she asked, so she might not be happy with me. Helia peers down at you, her avian eyes blinking, refocusing, narrowing. This, yeah, see, here we go. <laughs> oh, it's you. 
she says. What's up, Ahelia? How's it going? Long time no see. It's been some time, Watcher of Cadenua. But not time enough for me to forget what you've done. Uh, yeah, in my little, uh, kind of conclusion of the first game, she wreaked havoc on the planet because she was pissed about me. So, yeah, going against her did not go well for me. Helia's voice drops to a low rumble. It catches in your mind, like a feather at the back of your throat. Few are the kith who would dare make a pledge to a god and then so brazenly betray them. Did you see them on the street, I wonder? Those hollow-eyed children bereft of souls. Did you smile when their parents sobbed over their empty, wasted bodies? Did you congratulate yourself for a job well done? So she asked me at the end of the game you decided where all the souls that the villain had gathered would go. So she had asked me to put them all back into the bodies of the children that they'd been stolen from. Because that was a problem. Children were being born, hollow born, which is born with no souls. So she wanted me to put them back. I decided in the end to give them to the, the put the souls into the land to strengthen the people who were already living there. Um, so obviously she is not happy that I did that. Would that you were not Bareth's tool, that I might demand my most vicious children rip your flesh from your bones. See? Not happy. Instead, I must send my children to you with a gift. Okay. The birds circling above Helia raise their voices in a cacophonous symphony of screeching. Her lips upturn in the smallest, bitterest of smiles. This is probably going to be a double-edged gift. When you return to your ship, dear Watcher, do think of me. That's ominous. Mogren casts a sidelong glance toward Helia. So I don't think we went over Mogren. Uh, Mogren has got us war, fire, in case that isn't obvious, uh, transformation, purification, consumption, and trials. Uh, patron goddess of the Deerwood, thought to have blessed the Godhammer bomb that destroyed Widewind and possibly Aethys. So the people who fought against uh, Aethys during that war were worshippers of Magrin. And the Deerwood is where the first game took place, so obviously, you know, she was a big role there. So much for cooler heads. You can't be certain, but you think you might see Magrin, great goddess of fire, trial and war, stifling a laugh. <laughs> find this all amusing, do ya? The crows, ravens, rooks, and jackdaws sitting on Helia's shoulders cackle mockingly at Mogren. Mogren says nothing, though a great gout of steam spouts from her molten skin. Aethys has been separated from us for too long. Isn't it possible he intends only to gather enough souls to reclaim his realm in the beyond? He should be welcomed. I don't care if he intends to betray you or whatever it is he plan on doing, so say nothing. Scan shuffles forward. Yes, yes. We should welcome Aethys' return to the fold. His gratitude we can leverage to cajole him into divulging his plot. This is one of the things that I always love about, you know, whenever you're dealing with pantheons, is they all have their own little agendas and thoughts and feelings towards things, and, and they constantly are just arguing and working against each other, so it's just always interesting to see that kind of dynamic. Then, when he believes himself to be in our good graces, we do as Wetica suggests, and crush him into the earth. Scan pauses, inspecting you. Mm -hmm. Ah, and here is the Watcher who killed Lord Harren, the man who tormented his dear niece, Alice. Curious. So this was a quest in the first game where uh, this guy sent me out to find his niece, and it turns out I came to find out that he was basically trying to like marry her or just have his way with her, whatever. Wasn't happy, so when I came back to him, I was like, nope, I'm going to kill you because you're, you're a nasty, nasty old man. Scan licks the ragged edge of his lipless mouth and grins, then turns to Helia. I did not expect such a deliciously ruthless idea from you, Helia. I am impressed. Helia's feathered crest stands on end. You, you wretched little creature. He's too dangerous. You have to destroy him. It's just, you know... Usually I'm a say nothing, but this is just like I've kind of had enough. You know, this is 
we can't let him live. We can't let his plan come to fruition. Anything the gods are doing is always bad in my guy's mind, so. His vessel may be destroyed, little watcher. But Aethys is more than the vessel that holds him. He will always return, however we strike him down. Margarin says. I'm just gonna the quiet down. Knight gestures for silence. Aethys cannot be killed, but he may be subdued. Yet to do so will take immense power and time. Both stand in his favor. Margarin grits her black glass teeth. That is why we must ascertain his plans before he has the chance to put them into motion. She begins to pace. Her steps leave little trails of fire in her wake. Mogren stops and balls her hands into flaming fists. Even if we manage to destroy his current form, there is the possibility he could return if he has not already absorbed all of his children. Absorbs his children, I don't understand. The pallid knight casts a cold, cutting glare in Mogren's direction. I guess this is something they did not want me to know. Mogren speaks too freely. That knowledge is beyond your ken, Watcher. Wodica waves the gods to silence. Aethus gathers strength. His strength is a threat to us. Her voice takes on a sharp, almost panicked edge. There is no sensible answer to the question of a resurgent Aethus, other than decisive, final action. Just gonna wait to see what they have we to say. We will act when it is appropriate to do so, and not before. The Pallid Knight steps away from the half-circle of assembled gods. She pulls herself up to a great height. The words she speaks next come not from her mouth but from all around you. Follow him, Watcher. The black of the Pallid Knight's irises expand until her eyes are as dark and cold as the void between stars. She bends down and brings her ghostly face level with your own. Your debt to me remains unpaid. Gonna continue and just not even give him the, the benefit of, of, of responding. She stares at you, unblinking. Like a needle drawn to a magnet, you are pulled toward her one compulsory step at a time. Helpless to resist, you tumble into her impossible eyes. You fall wildly, endlessly, unable to find your bearings or slow your spin. And in the distance, above, no, behind you, comes an insistent ringing. You angle yourself toward it, searching for the sound. A small silver bell appears just inches from your fingertips. You reach for it, straining to still its interminable ringing. The moment you touch it, your soul slams into your body with all the force of a fall from the top of the sky. Ow. You blink open your eyes and find yourself on the floor of your ship's cabin, alone. And this is also something, whenever you're traveling in your ship, uh, there's a button, I think it's up at the top of the screen, you can press it and it'll take you into like the ship level so you can wander around your ship and look around and just see it. Um, yeah, you can also, I think there, there, oh, I need to go to my cabin because there is stuff in there. Uh, but then also you can always switch back and like, keep traveling. It's just if they wanted to show off their water thing is probably all it is. Does this one embark? Oh yeah, see, so this is the button, yeah. Alright, what is this? Fragments of Whispers of... Now, see, I should have also the fragments of the... I think it's glitched. I don't know. I've heard a lot of reports on this. So uh, there's two weapons that you can bring over from the original uh, Pillars of Eternity, depending on what choices you made for the first game. Uh, so you get the Whispers of Yenwood sword, and then there's the, the sword of the like endless depths or paths or whatever it was. Which I really wanted to get, um, but it is not here. Um, and I've heard say if you load a, a game from the Pillars of Eternity One and you don't do like one of the pre-mades or or make your own, uh, it it doesn't show up. Like there's a glitch. So whatever. It's unfortunate. 
Let's see, what is this? Letter from Ofra. Atticus, I hope this letter finds you in good health. It has been many summers now since you first arrived in Gilded Vale. Much has changed in those years for both of us. I do not know if you remember me, but the day you came to my door is not one I will forget. For months afterward, I wrestled with my faith and my fear, and still the gods have blessed me with a son. He is healthy and strong. What? Oh. <laughs> it's, you know, just, it's, anytime it's healthy, it's probably going to say that. And already so curious, all of Gilded Vale dotes upon him. I have told him of you. He asked constantly after the Watcher, who restored his spirit, and hope one, hopes one day to meet you. Till then, that we keep in your prayers, your most grateful servant, Afra. I believe this is the sister in the very first part of the game. You got a party member who didn't make it very long, but she told you about a sister, and you go to find her, and she has like a baby, and you go to make this potion that she can take, which will supposedly protect her child from being hollow-born, uh, even though the person who makes the potion tells you it's a fake. But, um... Uh, yeah, so I guess supposedly the child was born healthy, so good for him. It's just kind of a cool little nod back to, like, the first game. And you can come down here, and you can say hi to your crew members if you want. Uh, you can just look around your boat, all that stuff, which I'm guessing this would change, um, you know, if you got a, a, a bigger boat, or a different boat, I should say. It would look different in there. So it's just kind of a cool little fun thing to do. But yeah, there's a special uh, merchant in Nekataka where you can get the, the weapons from the original game, like, reforged. So. And I think if you have both of them, it's if you have the Whispers of Yanwood and the Blade of the Endless Paths, you can actually get them merged together into one weapon, which is, is supposed to be really nice. So you can see here, you can come out and look at the amazing water that they have. It almost looks like... I don't know if it's just because our, our ship is just all dirty and stuff like that. It needs to get a little fixed up, but... See, it looks like crap. <laughs> um, but you can uh, change the colors on your ship and all that kind of stuff. Oh, and we have to level up. That's right. Can I access all my characters in here? Doesn't look like it. Okay, well, we'll have to level up another time then. All right, so let's head back to the world map. Uh, now that we got Seraphin, we can, I can go ahead and do all the leveling up. Uh -oh. But we should be heading to, uh, you know, we're going to be heading to a town, so I don't even know if I need to do the level up for the video. I can probably just keep going and then just do it when when I finish. Shouldn't be too too much more in the time for the time being. Well, it looks like another island. So check this out. Uh, if you see any of these places, you want to sail over those because those are like places you can discover, so they do give you XP for that. It's like an oasis over here or something like that. Oh, looks like we're heading into a combat area. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and level up really fast, and uh, if I can, can I level up? Or do I need to be, like, I think I need to be in, a, like, a, an area to level up. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll go ahead and go in here. I'll level up, because we're going to be doing some fighting, so I'd rather have my guys, especially Seraphim, all leveled up. Uh, the desert wind carries a symbolic susurrus to your ears from the canyon ahead. Punctuated by cracks and pops, it reminds you of eggs on a hot pan or a fire in dry brush. The low growl that accompanies it, however, raises the hair on the back of your neck. Have him search for the presence of other minds. Sees a cipher. Seraphim's eyes slide close and breathing slows. You feel the faint tingle of the cipher's abilities probing the edge of your own soul before turning outwards. I Cap, got twixt three and five minds ahead. One of them be right. God's damned big and twice as hungry, Seraphim scowls. Listen carefully. That'll be me. The sounds resolve into a rhythmic chittering, slowly and cyclically raising and falling. It sounds like a chorus of voices and human voices. Continue cautiously forward. You carefully enter the desert canyon, keeping to the shade, cast by the tall standing stones. Ahead of you, a group of Zorabs chant, hopping back and forth on skinny legs, shaking their spears. Nested between them rises the black, leathery form of a drake. The creature's wings rise above it as it tears at the corpse of a boar at its feet. Ah, why continue watching? Let's just do this. Draw your weapons and attack. Zorbs raise their weapons as the drake takes wing behind them. Okay, let's kill some stuff. Tired of all this conversation and sailing around. It's time to do some murder. <laughs> it 
So we'll see. I don't know if I'll be able to level up before battle. Hopefully it would be nice, but uh, I might not be able to. Doesn't look like it. Yep, there's no chance for sneak or anything. Yeah. Well, foodie. Uh, this is another thing that I added um, with the DLC, which is nice, which I'm going to click on. You can do this extra AI thing, so you can either do uh, AI inactive, AI active, or you can do AI active, but only with uh, an auto attack. So the character will still attack, even though they won't use any abilities. So that's what I'm going to put on my regular character. All right, so he is costing a necrotic lance. Who is he casting it on? Hopefully the Drake. I'm just going to make sure of that. Let's just go ahead and do that. You there, sir. Usually he cast that like immediately. Yeah, instant. I don't know why it's sitting there. Uh, I'm thinking that I'm going to want to put him. I'll leave it right now. That's really fine. You. This is another thing. Like I think there's a glitch because I have two frenzies. I don't know why. They're they're exactly the same thing. Can I hit anybody with this yet? I can hit the Drake. I'm gonna go ahead and frenzy. What do you have available? Nothing. Okay, you go ahead and start shooting that big nasty dude. What do you have to cast? Insightful. What is this? Perception. Yes, I definitely want that. Cast it as far forward as I can to make sure that just in case my guys move up, I just don't hit them. You, I need you to come up here and help me out because I'm about to get into battle. Okay, now let's paralyze some guys. I might switch. Do I have some kind of area effect that you can use? Ooh, that would actually be nice. No, I won't need it though because I'm about to get paralyzed probably, so I'll just stick with that. This thing isn't doing the job. Okay, now you, now don't move, attack. Why am I taking so long? Ouch. Wait, what? Why is he turned around? Will you... All kinds of weirdness going on. No, pause. Oh, jeez. This is not going well. How did you... Oh, she already used it. This is the one thing that I hate about sometimes when AI is active, especially with her. She likes to just cast stuff like crazy. She probably got rid of an affliction, I'm guessing, so now I can't heal. So I'm going to have to use that. Hopefully my guy doesn't die. Because it's not going to be good. You there, sir. Um, no. I need you to... Oh, crap. He's there, isn't he? Let's do... You know what? Screw it. The damage is probably going to be better. Bad. Take him down. Who is... This guy's doing the healing, huh? Okay, so let's attack him. You have... Gosh, you are earning stuff really slow. It's probably because of all the loading he has to do. Oh, you know, I just realized she probably wouldn't be able to heal him anyway, because... Okay, did you finish up that guy? Okay, I need you to come back over here and help me. The guy's dead, yes. I can't use potions. Duh, remind me of that. Oh, I do have enough to paralyze again, though. So let's see if I can get all three... Two of them. Let's do that. Okay. That's it. Where they? They're all moving so slow. Oh, nice job there, Adair. Very nice. No, don't bother with that for right now. Just start attacking. The paralyzed. You'll already get a decent game boost. Never mind. No, never mind. All right, guys. We need to kill them quickly. 
because otherwise they're gonna get me. <laughs> uh, I don't need the deflection helmet right now. Let's go. Okay, he moved over to Alof, which is fine. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Come on. There we go. Ah, oh, okay, good. Whew, that was a close one. I want to check something. Difficulty's still... Yeah, it's still classic. Okay. I'm just getting my butt kicked. All right. Well, hopefully when I level up, I'll get some stuff that will actually be helpful. Uh, let me go ahead and loot these guys really fast. Da -da -da -da. I'm going to turn off fast mode. All right. I'm going to go ahead and level up, and then I'll be right back. And then we'll probably rest, because I have a feeling... Yeah, I need to get rid of that injury. That one's really bad. All right, guys. So I finished leveling up. Uh, yep. I got barbaric blow for my uh, howler, so that should help me out in dealing some damage and maybe getting some more critical hits. Uh, added a bunch of new abilities for our cipher. Um, these are some of my favorites, like knocking people down. This one is a great one. Mind blanks does a lot of damage. This one paralyzes, which of course is going to help out with my uh, barbarian. And of course, uh, the the biggest thing is taking people over. I also just made it to where he's going to gain a little bit focus a little bit faster, hopefully. So speed that up. Uh, let's see. Grabbed a couple of spells for um, Aloth. I'd say whenever you have a wizard, this is a big one to pick up because it gives you uh, intelligence to start out. So having plus five intellect is really, really great for, and it'll increase all your other spells durations and everything. So it's good to have. Um, and picked up a couple other abilities and things. Uh, increased his chance for crits. Uh, all that good stuff. So right now I'm going to go ahead and rest because I want to get rid of this. Um, so let's see what we have. One of the best things to use is to use stuff like this that either has zero crew morale or even better, minus one crew morale. Because then, um, so like, worst comes to worst, you can use hard attack just to get rid of, uh, there's no bonuses, but at least you do get rid of any of that stuff. So let's see what we have here. Though. Plus five, definitely don't want to use that one. No. There's a zero with, what is that, milk? Yeah. So if I can find any minus ones, oh, I think minus is just the, that, yeah. So like zero gives perception. Uh, definitely want that for him, which will be nice. A palm stone dexterity might reduce damage taken is always good. Give that to him. Uh, and you don't have to give food. Uh, this, the only reason you would give food is if you want either the bonus or you want to get rid of an injury. That's really about it. You can also just wait. So if you just want to take up time but not do an actual rest, you can do that. You can also access crafting here. Uh, so you can make drugs, explosives, uh, different kinds of foods, potions, all that kind of stuff. I haven't really done too much. Mainly I just craft food, um, mainly just to be able to use for healing and then also for um, uh, crew morale. So, But I think that's it. Um, these guys aren't really going to be taking too much damage, and I don't really have a ton of food, so I don't really want to use up uh anything resolve is something they don't they're not going to need melee attacks they're not going to be doing any of that he then received fortitude yeah none of that really even necessary so we'll just go ahead and rest with that so yeah they got rid of the camping supplies from the first game which is great um even though I, it was it was kind of both it was annoying to have to use it but then also you got so much of it you never ran out oh i missed something um so I'm totally fine with the fact I got rid of it. Now, of is that all in this area? A lot of times they have these, these little short areas, so there's not really much else in them most of the time, but never a bad idea to take a look around. We'll speed time up just so we can get moving. Take a look over here. I do definitely regret some of my choices when it came to um, character creation because um, after really looking at it, uh, they really did change some stuff from the beta. So like Might and Resolve are kind of just broken stats that are really kind of useless. Um, perception is probably the, the biggest thing with every single character. It's a good idea just to max that out as best you can because it's going to increase the amount of times you hit, increase the amount of times you crit, so increasing damage that you deal. It's also huge in a hugely used in a lot of conversation and uh, scripted uh, moments so it's a really great stat to have and the other ones just don't really add as much dexterity is really great too um, because it increases your action speed um, so those are two stats that are really really great to boost up as much as possible um, but other than that there's yeah just even constitution is just not really that great because with the amount of abilities that you can use to prevent getting hit having resolve and constitution really don't even matter that much 
Okay, so you come upon the opening to a small cave. Putrid gusts of hot air burp from deep within, and you hear the faint chitter and hiss of Zorops in earnest conversation. Your boots crunch through a drift of brittle bones as you creep into the Zorop lair. So yeah, I probably really, if I, I would go back, I'd probably just almost like max out the penetration or the perception on my character just to like really make it to where he's hitting every time and getting those crits and even boost up his uh, dexterity so he's just hitting more and not worry so much about might. I put a little bit more might than I wanted to, or I probably should have. I've discovered something. Wow, he saw that from really far away. Okay, so I shall be discreet. Be stealthy. You know, oh. Since I had a new guy, I need to change this up. Yeah, because that is not how I want you guys at all. Uh, so let's see. You need to be in the back. You can be... To tell you the truth, I'd almost rather it. There. That'll probably work. Oh, yeah, Dare's going in first. That's kind of what I want. Somebody. I can't see you, you sneaky bastard. Oh, hello. Okay, so we got uh, War Chief, Skirmisher, Skirmisher. Are these explosive? No, just regular barrels. Okay, so what I think I would... What is this? Skirmisher. So he's obviously going to be the big problem. Oh, and they have a sigil of atrophy. So these are things that you'll find in a lot of areas where they give off this like AOE that gives you a debuff. So if you can, you want to fight away from them. So what I'm probably going to do is charge over here and attack this guy. Um, leave Adair probably right around here to engage these guys when they come running over and try and take this guy out quickly. Hmm. Sure. Oh, let's take fast mode off because that's just going to be a pain. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and attack him. Launch a spell that way. Just have her attack. Although, I totally see this guy coming up underneath here, which is probably going to be a problem, but we'll deal with that if when we come to it. Uh, let's see here. Oh, he starts out with 17. Oh, good. He actually can use an ability. What is this one? Tenuous Grasp. It sails the target's grasp in reality, causing shaken and confused. Oh, that's that's a nice one. Confused. Attacks his friendly and hostile targets. Cool. Okay. Ooh, can he reach? Oh, he can. 49%. Mm. It's tempting. Oh, well, I might use it if this guy comes over here. Although, I don't know. We'll see. Anywho. Till then, just go ahead and attack this guy. Okay, and then Adair, you just kind of hang out right there. Once battle starts, I'll be popped that. No, he's on the other side of that wall. I think he shouldn't be a problem. Oh, although he might get summoned just from all the noise that we're making. You cast that. You keep charging in there. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, you're casting stuff. And I'd rather you just attack. I'd rather you just attack him. Where's the dare at? He's waiting. You know, he's gonna, he's gonna run over here and try and heal him. That's what he's gonna do. It's fine. I got something for him. You sir. You go ahead and blind him. I don't know where you're going with that spell. Oh, actually, you know, I totally forgot. Like I said, always cast this first. Okay, he's gonna get attacked here. Well, that's nothing I can do about that. So let's see, where is Adair? Okay, you need to come out of stealth and hurry up and get over there before he heals him. What is he casting? The question is, who is he casting that on? See, I do want you to cast that, but on this guy. I want you 
to cast that. Good, so he broke his concentration, so that should stop open stop him from casting that. That is not really where I want Aloth to be at all. Shaken, confused, yet he's still managing to attack him. Just, just okay. He's about to kill him, so I will go ahead and transfer him over there. I, I really don't like the way that this is. Aloth is not in a good spot, but once he kills him, then I can start moving guys over. Oh, crap, he's paralyzed? Well, then that just stink. Okay, we'll just do this then. It's gonna use up her healing, but oh well. It's gotta be done. Okay, you. Let's go ahead and... Aloth's probably going down. This is just me poorly figuring this out. Um, unless... Oh, oh crap. Is that quite enough? I might just have to use this just to hopefully... That's the problem is it's not going to hit that guy. I'm going to wait and see if I can get this one. That would be very nice. These guys are just also taking way too long to kill. I might have to break engagement with him and go over here to help Aloth. Although, ooh, that guy's almost dead. Okay, here we go. You guys both attack him. Hopefully that will... Do you have... Let's see here. What do you have to do? <sighs> Nothing really that helpful. Just go ahead and throw this out there and hope for the best. It'll go away from everybody else, so I don't have to worry about too much AOE. Yep, there that went. Okay, so you, I'm still waiting to get... You know what? Fine, if you're going to be engaging in melee, let's switch you over to that stuff. See how you do. Did you paralyze? Gosh darn it! You attack him, because he needs to die. There. Okay. Now you can go back to him. Um, Adair looks fine, so I'm going to send him over here to attack these guys. Can I hit? Ah, oh, crap. No. Now I probably can. So let's go ahead and paralyze him. Why is he taking so long to cast this? That's really my question. Oh, there he goes. That was fast. Okay, now everybody go after this guy. Yeah, see, that thing just hit, and so it does minus two might. So they can be extremely annoying. One good thing is you can't shoot. Oh, wait, no. See, so that is a gunpowder barrel. So I do not want the guy with the AoE, or really any of the melee guys to take it. You guys just move over here. Just let those two destroy it. Switch you over to your pistols. Actually, you just shoot the gun barrel, and that should blow it up. And see if I. Oh, crap. That guy's still alive. Let's go. items in the I've barrels. So if you find regular barrels, go and destroy them. Ooh, look. A new shield. Alright, let's
let's see what this puppy's got. So it's a small shield. Uh, oh, all defenses against gaze attacks, fire attacks. Interesting. It's a, oh, I have a medium shield. Hmm, 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 hmm. It would make me more accurate, but uh, right now I just I need the extra defense, so I'm just gonna stick with what I got. At some point in time, I'm gonna move him to two weapon fighting, probably. We'll see. I don't know. Some water, but hey, I'll take it. Ooh, hidden item over there. Nice. Mother Sharp Rock. From between the bars stares a frail and sickly Zora. It shrinks when you near, pressing itself into the furthest corner of its cage, trembling. Around its neck are the remains of a bedraggled feathered crest. Paint is smeared across its face, but the paint is old, flaking. It hasn't been re reapplied in some time. Oh, lots of stuff. The Zorops regalia tells you they must have been an important figure in the tribe, perhaps a high priest or a mother, but its condition makes it clear that those days are long past. What happened to you? The Zorop watches you with an unreadable expression on its face and says nothing. Break open the cage, big bulging bicep. You tear the bars clear out of the frame. The Zorop scrambles to get out of your reach. When you make no move to capture it, it stares between you and the open cage door. Blinking rapidly, it tenses, then bursts out the door. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens with that. Oh. Why are you following me? The Zorb tilts its head slowly and blinks. It narrows its eyes like it can't quite figure out what you mean. It glances back at the cage you freed it from, then stares at you expectantly. Do you always follow your leader around? The Zorb clings tightly to your leg and refuses to let go. You want to come with me? It stares at you, unblinking, and finally releases your leg. When you make no move to chase it away, it hops up and down excitedly. So, I guess we just got a new buddy. Barrel. Okay, so Alot took an injury. What's he got? He never, oh, gaping wound. That's usually what you get, and quite frankly, it's not really that bad, depending on who it is that it's on. Um, especially on, like, a wizard. Uh, it's not really that bad of an ability. There was a high priest. I guess they must have come running out there to fight. Okay, so let's loot this. Fine dagger. He's already got one of those, doesn't he? Yes. Good stuff to sell. Okay. Let's go ahead and explore the rest of the cave. Let's head over here. Keep it down. Stealth it up. Oh, uh, and see, this is the one thing, is, is uh, sometimes when you get hit with those curses from those the totems or whatever, they stick around. Um, but a lot of times you can find um, items in the world that give you uh, protection from them. Oh, like this. Sigil of Atrazy Warstone. There you go. So, um, I'll give that to him. Let's see here. Da -da 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 -da. So you just put it in your... It's not a potion. That is some bull crap right there. Okay, then fine. We'll have Aloth use it then. So he just can't really use anything, can he? Wait, that's not what I wanted. Aloth. Yes. See, so now they are immune to it. And usually wherever you get the item, it's I usually shot. the only place where you're going to run into that thing, so you don't have to worry about it. It uses it up when you use it like it's gone, but you don't have to worry about keeping it because, quite frankly, you're never going to use it again. It looks like that's it for this cave.
Oh, and once you've uh, searched like enough of an island, you can actually name it. Um, so let's see here. Uh, what do we want to name this one? I don't know. Uh, we ran into our first Drake, so we'll call it Drakeland. Why not? And yeah, see, then you'll actually just, the name will show up on the island. So it's just kind of a fun little thing that that you can do. Broken Spear Pass. Oh wait, hold on. Let's see what's. Is there anything on the south side section? Yes. Got some ale. Nice. Okay. Bones crunch underfoot, strewn across the sand. Our skeletons half buried in wind-blown dunes or lying bleached and baking in the sun. Their corpses still wear the tattered remnants of their clothing, their packs tangled in their limbs. Worms circle like vultures high above you. You feel a tug at your leg. Mother Sharprock clings to your boot, staring out at the dunes, then looks up at you. Her eyes are wide with fright. She fears this place. So bad stuff happens here. The sand is strangely lively here. It dances as if caught in a breeze, but there is no wind to stir it. Several piles of grit rise above the dunes in suspiciously, suspiciously orderly mounds. So yeah, see, perception comes up a lot in this kind of stuff. Uh, search the skeletons. You approach the nearest skeleton and untangle the pack from its remains. As you disturb the skeleton, several sand blights rise up from the desert with a great gust of wind and head straight for you. Let's get it on! <sighs> okay, so it looks like I'm going to be fighting some blights. Sand or wind blights? Or earth? I don't know what they would be. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Sand blights. Oh, that one's a little higher than me. And a couple of desert worms. Okay, so he's getting booted up. I guess it's fine. Let's go ahead and rage. Everybody's got piercing resistance. You might as well attack that one because he's going to be coming right for you. You. I'm going to cast that first. Well, you don't know. Actually, that's not. While it is a great uh, spell, I just realized like a lot of his stuff is going to be more direct damage is what I'm going to have him doing. It's still nice for him to have, um, but I don't think he's going to need it right away. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and start hitting this guy, because he's coming at my side where there's not going to be a lot of warriors. If I can take him out quickly, I'm going to have a dare basically come up and tank this dude. See, usually he casts that almost like immediately, like you already see the effect, so I can pretty much go ahead and give him another task to do. Let's see. Okay, yeah, so there he goes. So I'm going to send you up here to hobble that guy, because I don't think you can blind him. Yeah, perception afflictions. He's Oh, he's resistant, but not immune. So that's fine. Uh, <laughs> okay, now let's paralyze some dudes. Can I get all three of these? Oh, it looks like he's already paralyzed. So might as well just hit these two. Secret spot. That's, that's nice and all. Let's see. Did I paralyze? Yes. All right. He's immobilized. Immobilized. So they didn't get paralyzed, but they got immobilized. I guess that's fine. All right. Now that you're done casting that, I want you to put down that so we can get some healing going because I have a feeling we're going to need it. You do not need to cast that because they're paralyzed. They don't need to be prone. What I would love for you to do is this. There we go. So 
let's see, he's got a lot of piercing damage. Let's go ahead and start attacking this guy. Get Aloth. Actually, no. Just, just do that. Oh, that guy's dead. Nice. Okay, now we'll do a barbaric blow on. Let's go ahead and charge off towards him. Just let um, Adair sit there and tank that guy while I take out these um, traits. There we go. Now we're doing some damage. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll charge over here. View attack him. View cast. Dare keep doing what you're doing. You're doing great. Okay, now looks like everybody's doing what they should, which is attacking that. Oh, heck yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Did I just crit that guy and kill him? Let's just see. I'm just curious. Um. Yeah, created him and killed him. Nice. Very nicely done. Okay, we'll pick up some loot. On it. Can put a little secret stash here. What is that? Oh, sweet. Okay, I'll give that to my healer. Get some lesser lay on hands, which is always nice. So that just gives her extra heal that she can do. Okay, that looks like it for this. Oh, wait, no, there's another one there. Okay. Let's continue on our voyage. Fantastic voyage. All right, we'll probably just figure finish up this island, and then uh, that'll probably be the end of the video because we've been going a, a little bit. So we'll have to wait to reach Nekataka for the next one. But that's the thing is there's just so much to do in this game. It's so big, and that's why um, the other thing I, I have noticed is that the, the difficulty is definitely kind of broken on this. Um, so we'll have to see if they redo anything with that. All right, I think that's it for the island, so we'll go ahead and head back to the boat. And with that, I think we'll just have to, uh, you know, call an end to it. We'll, we'll get back on here, and then we'll have to continue on our, our trip on the next video. But uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying, uh, you know, what you're seeing. You know, if you do, be sure to give us a like and uh, subscribe if you want to see more. Um, also, of course, as always, be sure to check us out on the Used Gamers podcast. You can check out uh, some of the reviews and different uh, game discussions that we have on there. Uh, check out any of the podcast apps to, to find that. And I'm going to say check out probably uh, five more times because I just keep repeating myself. But anyway, yeah, hope you guys are enjoying it. I hope you keep showing up. Uh, but uh, be sure to tune in next time to see uh, how our uh, continued voyage goes through the dead fire.